Okay, this meeting of the U.S. River School Board will come to order. Um, so, you stand if you wish and pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, public comment. Public comment, hearing none. Public comment? No. Okay. Um, approval of minutes from the June 18th meeting. Can I have a motion to approve? Kenny? I make a motion to approve the minutes from our June 18th meeting. I'll second. Okay. There was one question. Um, this is not that the minute, not a question of accuracy of the minutes, but Kenny, uh, just so we're clear that your motion to support the concept of the creation of the Chinese after school program, my understanding is that the implication is that, that, that a, a, a subsequent proposal will come before us. Is that? That was my understanding um, that we supported um, the initiative to explore bringing that program, but we realized that there was nothing contractual and that eventually that would come back to us for final approval. Okay, thanks. If that's the understanding, okay, okay. Are, are there other changes? I had one that was also under the, uh, the discussion of the, uh, the Chinese program. And there it's, in the minutes it says uh, no cost to district, but it really was the cost, it should be the cost of the district is one way transportation from each elementary school and a possible aid for special ed students. Okay. Do you have that change? One way bus. One way transportation. One way transportation from each elementary school uh -huh. and a possible aid for special ed students. Thank you. <coughs> Other changes? Tom. Maria? <laughs> On page two, second paragraph, uh, raised funds for project 68. It's the uh, end 68 hours of hunger program. So instead of project 68, it should be project 68. No, no it's not no project. scratch project. It's for the end 68 hours of hunger. And then on the last page, uh, page five, uh, right after public comments, Maria Barth would like to discuss a comparison group, period, and to get a progress report of our achievements compared to that group. Comparison group of schools is what isn't that what you meant, a group of school? Group of school, school districts. We're school districts, right. Of oh, get a progress report of group of school districts? No, student achievement in Oyster River as compared to the group of districts that we pick. Comparable districts? Right. Thank you. To the group that we decide on. You want to just read it back so we make sure <laughs> that. And to get progress report of student achievements in Oyster River as compared to the group. Comparison group that's decided upon. Thank you. Okay, okay for that? That's good. Okay. Sarah, did you have something? Um, one thing also in the Chinese foreign language program. Um, and I, I don't know how specific things get in, need to get in these minutes. Um, <clears throat> I was thinking one I would like to see in there, though, was a concern that I voiced um, about the fact that uh, once this language program gets expanded into the school day, or if that were to happen, it is not a done deal that it is Chinese. That would have to become a, a discussion, a community discussion as to 
if foreign language gets expanded at some point, you know, this wouldn't necessarily mean it was Chinese, it wouldn't mean it was not, but it, that would have to be a community discussion or at least a board administrator level discussion. So do you have language to, if you'd like that in the minutes, I think it should be in the minutes. Be a discussion on which language will be added. Correct. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Okay. But that would come as your comment, not yes, as Sarah, Sarah. Right. That was right, right. That was my. Yeah. That was Sarah. That was Sarah. my concern. Okay. Okay. Other changes to the minutes. Okay. With those uh, changes we've already noted, uh, all those in favor, please raise your hands. Seven in favor, the student rep in favor. I'm sorry, why don't you introduce yourself? I'm just, yes. um, my name is Kyle Nanda. I am going to be a junior at the mm -hmm. high school. Mm -hmm. well, thank you for being here. Of course. Um, uh, announcements and com commendations, district? Good evening, uh, Carolyn Eastman, Assistant Superintendent. Uh, I just wanted to announce and commend uh, Summer School, or I would say Summer Reach program, is off and running with our programs for the summer. And um, I have to say it's been going really smooth. It's been a great start. We started this Monday. They run Monday through Thursday. Uh, we've collaborated with Durham Parks and Rec, UNH Interoperability Lab. Um, and I have to say, with all the things that are going on in the school, with uh, facilities, um, all the collaboration paid off. It's been going really well. So uh, I'm really excited to see how the, the summer unfolds. So thank you. Thank you, Carol. Other district reports? District um, board announcements and accommodations? Hearing none. Okay. Um, is there a report from the assistant superintendent? No? Okay, superintendent's report, um, curriculum update, a, a kindergarten committee update. Um, so we began the organization of the all-day kindergarten committee and we met with uh, the entire uh, kindergarten staff as well as special ed director and the two elementary principals. And um, the goal is to expand that committee to include um, interested uh, parents. So that will gear up for the fall. And that's my total report on that right now, Tom. I'm wondering whether we could have some time benchmarks where something might come back to us, you know, what, rather than just, you know, maybe not, may not have that now, probably can't, but uh, right. whether if it's November we come back with a report from that committee or whether sure. you can have a date, so it just doesn't, doesn't open-ended. Yep, yep, I have that on my, um, in my office on my big board. On your big board, your famous <laughs> board, yes, okay. Yeah, the, so scary, I'll, I'll, the scary I'll, board of yours, yeah. yeah. It's starting to stretch into other walls. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I will do that. Are there other que questions for the superintendent about the kindergarten? Would you want a board member or two on that committee? Would that be helpful? Um, well, that's a good question, Ken. I haven't thought about it in terms of, it's not a bad idea. If a board member is interested in doing it, just I, I, I hesitate. The only reason I hesitate is I know how many other committees everybody's on, and I don't want to add it unnecessarily to people's workload, but I wouldn't mind if a board member wanted to do it. So I just ask the chair if somebody's interested and you want a um, point. I, I would be interested. But my thought was just um, I, I, something will come before the board, and, and uh, sitting on the board, the depth of explanation and process um, is so meaningful. Sure. And just therefore to have more voices to, you know, that fill in some of the nuances and discussions and how a, a you know, kind of a plan is arrived at. I just thought that might be helpful. Great. Be pretty, I think it'll be fairly intense in the fall, you know, a couple times a month. Yeah, I, can, okay. I mean, if, if, if that's okay with fellow board members, I'm very willing to do that. Okay, with me. Unless somebody else would rather do it, and then we can make it. Okay. Great. Thanks, what, Kenny. What time would you be meeting? Well, I mean, that's the issue is the teacher's day on after school meetings. At least it's an elementary situation, so probably 3.30-ish. Because um, 
you know, I got to get the mass way teachers, the Mohammed teachers, over to whatever location we're meeting. So, you know, no, they can't happen any sooner than three thirty. Probably realistically, it'll be three forty-five. And, and that work. That's when I'm available. So that's okay. Perfect. Great. Thank you. Um, other, other questions about kindergarten? Yeah. How will the interested parents be solicited? Um, I can do it through the newsletter, and if I get um, too many people, then I'll just do it through HAT. You know, I also would um, let the parents of preschoolers know through the preschooler um, network, and and um, you know, be pretty random because the committee's got to stay relatively agile, so it can't get too big. Yeah. So if I have a few parents from each school community and a few parents meeting like maybe two, so a total of six. Um, I think it keeps the committee functional. If we get too big, it gets kind of crazy and, on, and we can't get the work done because. And if we know of people who are interested, can we send them your way? Send them right to me, please. <laughs> yeah, you know, send the names and just Excellent. say that, and you know, I'll put out something in the newsletter. It's one okay. of the reasons why I wanted to wait till the fall is because we started this right at the end of the school year. No way to reach out without sending out, you know, a thousand, right. as opposed to using the newsletter, which goes out already. So I'll make sure that's a priority for the fall. And yeah, if you guys have names of people who are interested, that would be wonderful. Okay. Other questions about kindergarten? Uh, enrollment updates? We've yeah. got the number of charts. So you've got all kinds of information from me for this meeting. Um, the, the, the information that I put in your folders has already been posted to the web page. So I just want to point out a few things. Um, if you look at this grid um, slide, it's 2012 and 2013. And then I'll add the projected number for, two, for the upcoming school year. So in 2011-12, um, our enrollment was um, 2,013 students. 2012-13, the enrollment was 2,058 students. And as we sit here tonight, the projected enrollment for this fall is 2,072 students. So just incremental increases, nothing that, you know, blows any of our plans out of the water. Um, so in three years, we're up about 59 students, which pretty clearly, you know, indicates that that decline that was looking pretty severe when I first came as superintendent has leveled out. And based on the long range planning projected numbers that the, that committee shared with us, we know that those numbers are going to level out for the next five school years. So. Everybody was anticipating that this system would drop by four or five hundred students in a ten-year period. Um, that all changed last summer with the influx of those 80 students. So it also doesn't mean that we're growing out of control. It just means we're really kind of statistically holding our own. 59 students isn't a deal breaker, but it does say to the community that we're stabilized for the first time, you know, in a very very long time. The um, enrollment right now at Moharamid is about 395 students. I would caution everybody to remember we're in July and things change between July and August. And what we don't know is students who have moved out and we also don't know whether students have moved in. I have written a letter on behalf of the Long Range Planning Committee to the three towns asking them if they would share um, new homeowners with us so we could send a letter out to them saying please register your child now, don't wait till the fall. So we're in a much better place than uh, we were last summer where we felt a little crisis oriented, but I, again, we still have six weeks of summer left. The one hiccup in the enrollment right now that concerns both me and Dennis Harrington is our current kindergarten enrollment at Moharamet. That is now, as of today, actually bigger than the number you have. It's 62 students. So Dennis and I have come up with a plan where we would assign one of the first grade teachers half time to the kindergarten so we can lower the kindergarten enrollment for we'll add another session. Well, it is in effect lower the kindergarten enrollment to 15, 16, which is very comparable to Massway. And then we would take that other half time teacher and keep them in first grade to relieve, help relieve the first grade. But at the current enrollment level, the first grade at Moharamid is right around 20. So having that extra half body can allow the first grade to be able to specialize reading or math, utilize another teacher to help um, in that situation. So in effect, what we're suggesting is we still think we can deal with our enrollment issue at Moharamet with the current staff. We're not asking for new staff 
as we have in the past. We're asking, well, we're say, what, we're, what we're saying is we're recommending the reassignment of a current staff member. Um, and again, if you look at the Moharamet and Massway numbers um, in those two grades, um, Moharamet would be a little bit higher in first grade, but not dramatically higher. And so the two grades then would be relatively comparable between the two buildings. Um, other than that, I don't have any um, recommendations based on what I'm seeing in enrollment. I would point out at the high school level that um, uh, the town of Barrington has already met its 2015-16 goal and the number of students that it planned on sending to us. So they actually are one year ahead of their contractual obligation to us, which is really you know, a good thing. And at the high school, you might recall, the high school and the middle school were vying for who had the most students in this past school year. And they both had like 684 to 685. And Todd and Jay were having a, a fun time trying to say who had the bigger school. As we open this fall, very clearly the high school will be the larger school. It's not going to be even close. And I would point out that the grade 9 enrollment for the upcoming school year is 199 students. So, you know, compare that to the grade 11 enrollment, 149, and you see the high school will hover in that um, 700, uh, low 700 range for, 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 for a while. If you, if you had the long range planning numbers in front of you, as the Barrington numbers go up, our own numbers, uh, birth numbers go down. So that's why you won't see a huge increase at the high school um, because the Barrington students will compensate there. So overall, I, as a July report, remember the day we're on is, you know, we're on Jul, you know, July 16th. Um, we, we look a lot better on July 16th than we did last year in July. I think that the board has been more proactive with me in addressing concerns as we've seen them. And so I think that's been a big help. And um, we have to see what happens in August. I mean, we've got another four weeks of ins and outs. So I think we're in a good place tonight. And I would answer any questions that you all have. Therese? Yes, about the kindergarten at Moharamet, um, something I'm confused about because I am on the long range planning committee, so I was comparing this to the reports that we had gotten there in the last meeting. And um, LaPierre, who is listed as a first grade teacher, last year was in the kindergarten, right. so she was a fourth teacher. So can you explain the sure. change during, in that, please? Yeah, during the budget process, Dennis felt that his need was in the first grade as opposed to kindergarten, so he uh, assigned her to first grade. But now that we're into the summer and the numbers are more um, real, mm -hmm. he realizes that that position needs to stay in the kindergarten. Um, and he also, you know, in this particular conversation we had is of this afternoon, w wants to maintain that extra help in the first grade. And we budgeted for it, so it makes sense. Okay. I'm just trying to make sure I'm clear of the model. Um, so the data we have in front of us shows that projected 60 kindergartners, and, I, and I, I know I've heard you say that you feel that 20 in kindergarten is higher than you feel is appropriate. So we're adding another session Division, to kindergarten, yeah. which will make that 15 plus we probably plus have some extras we had today. and probably some more. Then in the strictly first grade teachers, there's 68 children, and then there's one teacher who's doing a split first second, right? Who has seven and eleven. So, so, that, I'm, I'm, so there's 60 kids who are strictly first grade because you have a one-two combination. So those kids. Well, there's are, 70. Right. The, well, there's 75 kids in first grade. Mm. You have the 68 who are already who are in a strict first grade. And you have the extra seven who are in a one two. So they come to 75. So I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, would the class size mm -hmm. come to about 20 then? Is that? Yes. The is class, the, the first grade would be at 20. And then we'd have the extra half teacher to help the first grade teachers. To rotate through. So what will we'll happen? So one of, the, one of these, maybe one of the lines of 14 will disappear. And those children will be distributed exactly. to those other four mm -hmm. teachers, one of yep. them a split one, too. Okay. Yep. Got yep. it. Exactly. Denise? I'm sorry, one more question. So have students already been assigned to teachers at yes. this point? So yes. Okay, so yeah. they'll have to receive a letter of some sort. Mm -hmm. 
we have Dennis mm -hmm. went through this in August mm -hmm. of last year. So, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, it's it's also part and parcel of trying to, you know, figure out where those kids are going to be. Yeah. And, you know, we have not been a very successful district in getting the kindergarten parents to enroll early. And so, um, based on our experiences and Dennis's experience and Carrie's, we know that it's likely the kindergarten number will go up more than the first grade number. So this gives us a chance to address that in July. And then if, you know, at least now you know that we try to address it within our budgetary constraints. So if we come back in August and say the plan didn't work because of enro in, 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 incoming enrollment over the next month, um, it was a it was a great effort on our part, rather than just adding staff and not addressing it within the within the assets we had available. Um, so if I come back in August and say it didn't work, I need to have a half you know half time teacher. You'll know that we tried to go through the stages of using the resources we had. So I know you said you wrote a letter to the towns, but I, was, I think somebody in the past said I'm sending it to the realtors. But I mean the real gist to get to them is that. Uh, by enrolling, it allows us to staff properly, and if you right. don't, then it means that we're doing it the last thing. And, and so the realtors are going to be there with a the closing. So if something's sitting, really, the realtors can't release the information to us. That was the initial. Oh, really? That was but the I mean, they can at least out. have a sheet there that says oh, they, they can have the letter there, but right. they can't release the information to us. But the towns no. can say that you know, eight Moharamba Drive sold, and then I can send a letter out to eight Moharamba Drive saying it. If you have children, it'd be great if you could help us out. And I'm just saying, like, it's great if, if somebody's there. I mean, and it, while we can't ask the realtor for the information, it's always nice that they hand them the thing that just reinforces that, hey, you know what, this is really important for our staffing. So it's just one more way to try to get them to enroll. Denise, oh, well, you can go first. Go ahead. I, I think that outside here is great to have the realtors have that printed information that they give, which is great. And I, I, I think that's very, um, creative how you've solved or hopefully well, solved that think. number of <laughs> 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 but I just commend you for that. It just looks like a, a, a very good plan. It's right. creative well, thank you, thinking Ken. and it's, it's appreciated. So uh, on to news? Oh so um, so my question is if worse hopefully this won't happen and we don't have to add like a full time first grade but what about space? Is there actually... Well, that's the other advantage of the current plan that I proposed. There isn't additional space necessary. Right. Right. So we could run into an issue. And, and are any of the new, <laughs> these new students, because it seems like there is more room at Mast Way, are they within that district, uh, that if area? If they were within that district, then we, they're automatically enrolled at Mass Way. Right. But we haven't had, I mean, yeah. remember that the, the decision yeah. the board made was a very... Yeah cautiously yeah. transitioned plan. And so as Sue and I were talking about this the other day, you know, realistically we shouldn't see any major impact for two more school years right. as we weed out the siblings and all of that. So it really is a five year plan. And um, you know, if that plan fails, I think we're back to the drawing board in terms of looking at how we place students in the district. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I have one general enrollment question. Um, in these numbers, mm -hmm. there is no, and I understand that we are a, technically a K-12 district, right. but we house preschoolers in our buildings. Mm -hmm. So I guess my question is, are they, is their presence in these buildings reflected anywhere? They're only in the high school. Okay. And. Um, uh, it's, it's, they're not part of the high school enrollment, okay. but I, I certainly can add them to the report. Okay. And it adds the 30 kids, but you know, Catherine is looking to increase that, hopefully okay. by uh, bringing in more kids who are non-special ed. Okay. So why don't I add that to the next report in August? Yeah, thank you. And, one thing, and just one thing on that, Jim, what is the space when you do that report that, can, that we can occupy? I mean, I know they're at the high school, right? So what is their maximum potential? I'll, I'll have that for the August report. And then my other question was, can you, uh, I agree with Kenny, I think that was a, a great, you know, sort of way to try to handle that, um, you know, bubble and, you know, large numbers in K and small numbers. Can you talk a little bit about 
what is the philosophy when people decide to do split classes and when they don't? Because we have some low, you know, Massway has some low numbers in the third grade. Um, O'Hermit had high kindergartens, which you've addressed, but then very low ones, which you've addressed. So what, if that happens? When does it combine? Yeah. Come when into effect? Um, well, there's two, there's two different uh, philosophies, if you will, if you use that phrase that you used. One is based on educational um, philosophy, and the other one is based on budgetary practicality. Mm -hmm. So, um, for example, at Moharamet, we had a teacher who was going to be looping next year. Looping means that they will teach one grade in the first year of the loop, and the same kids move forward, and they teach the same kids in the second year of the loop. He was a very strong proponent of um, combined grades, but it didn't make sense in the enrollment projections that Dennis was working with to maintain that particular philosophy. So for him, it was an educational philosophy. Wonderful, great teacher, terrific, but he really did put his heart and soul into it. So the compromise with him was to do a loop, so he still gets to work with the same kids for two years, but one grade at a time. The other one is really just about money. It's really about, you know, can you combine these two groups of kids in order to eliminate a staffing cost? And so it's really just two different directions. Um, and the, the, the danger of the one that's based solely on money is then you are imposing a combined classroom on a teacher who may not buy into it philosophically like the teacher I was alluding to earlier. And then it becomes problematic because what happens if you don't buy into the philosophy is you start trying to duplicate your effort instead of blending your effort. And so if you believe in combined classrooms, what you do is you look for things that third and fourth grade students can learn together and grow together. But if you don't, what you try to do is teach third grade math, fourth grade math, third grade social studies, fourth grade social studies. And in that particular paradigm, it really becomes educationally unsound because you're imposing it as opposed to somebody who's buying into it. And, and as see, an administrator, do you try to find the balance between those two? Yeah, okay. um, you know, if we, yeah. it, absolutely. And, um, you know, in uh, my career, I've had many many teachers who, like the teacher at my hair, totally bought into a combined classroom. Multi-age classroom is another way of phrasing it. Um, if we have teachers who want to do that, we try to support them if it makes sense to the system as well. Um, but I would tell you that the trend in our district has been actually moving further and further away from the combined classroom because um, teachers are less and less interested in having that age range. So okay. that's where we are now. Thank you. You're welcome. Other questions? Okay, moving to the um, budget goals. Okay, so Sue, I'd invite you to the podium. What we, as Sue comes up, what we did was we resurrected the goals from last year. Um, the reason we did was we felt that they worked. And so our intent in putting them back to you unmodified is basically to say, you know, these goals worked in guiding our process last year. You'll have them for the upcoming um, month, and we meet in August. Um, then we can have a conversation about them and as to whether they make sense for the upcoming school year as well. So, Sue, do you want to take it from there? And in line with that, we just talked about what we might expect for an increase. And again, this is just preliminary. Um, in my memo, I just noted the increase that we had on the warrant for the teacher contract. And then just some assumptions. Um, we're negotiating two contracts. Um, our goal has been to increase facilities because we're behind, so we want to catch up. So every year we want to add more. So we applied a number to that, and the same with technology. Um, as we move forward, we want to continue and increase our funding um, in that area, too. So that puts us at over a million just to start, but preliminary. Um. And the, the intent of that wasn't to throw you guys off. It's just to throw the, what we see as the big numbers in front of you as we start it's the process. Realistic. And again, that doesn't include... Um, any increases in benefits, um, New Hampshire retirement, um, they set a two-year rate. This will be the last year of that, so they'll go back out again with a more than likely an increase in health insurance. Well, we were fortunate this year we saw a decrease, but you know who knows what that will be, so a lot of unknowns still. So, so the way I read this is that we're gonna, there's, there's going to be real tension between 
logical one and these numbers because if you just add <coughs> look at the percentage of this in terms of the whole budget here about 2.7 and 2.8 percent without any of these additions so uh, it's gonna be interesting yeah and I would also add that the board has done a really good job in terms of minimizing increases in the last five years um, not just since I've been here but certainly since Sue's been here and you know there are moments where you just have to face the reality that you can't keep it you know at that artificially little num number forever so it'll be a interesting conversation as we go through the budget process just one other comment I'm wondering if if the number of enroll the enrollment is up like 20 or 25 you've increased your by one percent your student body so whether the per student percentage I mean whether that's another way of calculating it because um, I mean it does we are hiring more people in the high school mm -hmm. to accommodate a bigger group so um, I don't know Goody? well I think more specifically if there's more tuition students mm -hmm. that means more revenue mm -hmm. for the district I think part of our tuition in inner agreement if we're considering just that mm -hmm. facet of it the thought was until we reach a critical mass we're not going to have to much increase staffing mm -hmm. but we are benefiting from having mm -hmm. that increased number of students who are paying tuition mm -hmm. but certainly if we're serving more students it's expected that there's a greater cost to that at, at the lower levels with um, the budget goal one just semantics I, I think what we're trying to say there is that the percentage change in the comparative budgets aren't going to exceed the cost of living. Right. It, is what I'm yeah. 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 That probably just should be read. So what, what you were talking, I just went on the federal report and to see what the cost of living was for so far for this year. It's 2.1. 2. So it's actually higher than it was last year. I, mean, I think we came in at 1.8. Yeah. 1.7 so we really did a great job last year but we may have to you know push the envelope in this one year to meet our needs but that's yet for you guys to discuss and talk through so we will meet on this again this will be the agenda for August yeah. to yeah. be voted on is that correct that would be accurate and then what we wanted to do is get these goals done in August then we wanted to do the strategic plan in August for operations the strategic plan in September the last meeting in September and then we'd have the budget goals we'd have a draft strategic plan for operations and for academics so we hit October and we start doing budget season we're not kind of shooting in the dark anymore we have the goals we have the strategic plan big issues and um, you know, we'll be in a much better place than we've been since I've been here in terms of putting a budget together because it would no longer be some artificial goal that would be goals and, and strategic plan to support them and we'll try to tie the budget into the strategic plan. Denise? Um, just a comment again about the tuition. Um, what occurs to me is that we have more tuition students than we had anticipated coming in this fall but that money, the, ex the extra money that we hadn't planned on is going back to the, uh, the voters because, or going back to the, because it, we can't add to our bottom line budget number. Correct. Is that correct? Yeah, so you, you, the voters approve a bottom line budget. That's right. why every time yep. um, I talk to you about adding something to the budget, I'm also looking inside the budget to pay for it because right. Um, we can't just add a hundred thousand dollars to a budget once the voters have set the budget it is set for the year right. we could have a million dollars come in more than we expected we can't touch it because the voters haven't authorized it yeah. so I think part of in setting our budget for next year I think that'll be one thing that we really need to look at is that Barrington is ahead of schedule and in terms of their numbers and and perhaps we need to plan you know accordingly so that we we can yeah, the the problem um, with the Barrington piece is we really don't know what the numbers are until well past March yeah. so now I can tell you we have 81 students right. but last March we were um, we, we didn't know that in fact right. we weren't anticipating 80 students I think Sue used a budget number of 78 or something in that Close. line yeah. Yeah. so we're only over a few students but that few students brought them to the FY 15 level where they where the contract initiates 
So um, we do try in the budget process to anticipate what we think is going to happen, and um, and we did. And so Sue has dug on close, um, you know, in terms of getting that number. So it's, uh, you know, we might have, um, you know, twenty-five thousand or thirty thousand dollars more than we anticipated. That's the money we can't touch, but we projected in the money that we thought would come in. Mm -hmm. And at one point, quite honestly, at the very end of the school year, we didn't think they were going to reach the goal that we had budgeted for. We thought we, we, we overstated the case, but as it's moved forward, they solidified into a number that was doggone close to what Sue had projected. Okay. Thank you. Well, so, you know, when we you know, it's strange doing this out a year. That hard. I remember when we were doing the negotiations with uh, with Barrington, we said that you could add what was it, like a hundred students without hiring anybody. My question right. is like, how close are we in the core classes? Kids are going to hitting those tipping points. Sure, that's a great question, Al, and um, it's a question that Sue and I and Todd have been talking about right along. So, um, in my conversations with Todd. We added the extra math position this year. That should stabilize him for a couple school years. And in tonight's proposal, I have the 0.6 science position. That would need to increase to, uh, by 0.4 next year, and he'd be stabilized in that area for a while. So, you know, the, the, the magic number is someplace above 100, um, where we'd have to again look at staffing. But again, what we're doing right now, just as a reminder, is we're taking almost almost 100% of the revenue from Barrington to offset taxes in the three towns. So we haven't invested much of that, of those funds in hiring staff or anything. We've used it for a, com a completely tax relief. So at some point, the numbers of students will increase enough so that we have to say, you know, Barrington students, we need an extra position out of that money. And so it won't always be 100%, but you know, the district has been very good at keeping that money to really to the ta taxpayers, um, but at some point we'll have to take some of it to offset staffing. Claire, did you? Yeah. Um, could I ask for some information to be sort sure. of pulled together for Absolutely. that, for the discussion on that first goal? Um, will Maria's little golden group of, <laughs> of districts be figured at that point? I mean, will. I guess well, because of your, the school districts the that you want to compare, the comparison. Oh, well, okay. um, um, because I, I'd love to know, I know for, for a number of years, the big discussion topic was cost per pupil that mm -hmm. we were yeah. talking about. So could we have cost per pupil here and cost per pupil for that, you know, comparison yes. group? Sure. To, that would be yeah. great. Thank Can you. we decide who that group is? No, we have yet to decide <laughs> that. Well, I have another question to look on that. Besides just the cost, and this is a little bit more work, and I don't know how to quite do it, but I'd also look at like that, that group. What has been their percent increase of their budgets over, say, the last five years? I mean, are they raising, are they going at 2%? Are they going at 5%? Just to get an idea of where they are going as well and what their trends are. Sure. <laughs> well, we used to do something like that. I rem I'm just trying to remember what was on that chart. But yeah. I mean, it's all information we can find. Yeah. In a prior year. Uh, so, yeah, we can find it. Okay. Anything, uh, Sarah, was that it? You uh, said that was it. Okay. <laughs> when do we get to decide on this group? Well, I'd say you're going to decide in August if you want to start using them for comparisons. I mean, we'll put together the comparison group, and you guys can decide whether it's truly the comparison group you want, and you can have that discussion in August and Thank you. go to town. Okay. Okay. Um, budget calendar? Yeah. fifteen, sixteen. hard to believe. Um, mm -hmm. Just, I have a preliminary schedule out there. Um, the main date was the one-day workshop day that we've set for the 23rd of October, mm -hmm. just so we are all on the same page and everybody's it's doable. Mm -hmm. um, and then the workshop days too, as we go through the process. So I just wanted to set those out there and mm -hmm. make changes now mm -hmm. or soon, if need be. I just want to say one thing about the one day. I think we. Need to maybe the, the uh, Alan 
well, maybe the whole group needs to talk a little bit so at some point about how that day is structured, because mm -hmm. I found it a grueling day to <laughs> sit through. Uh, uh, and whether we can have some kind of guidelines as to what the purpose of that day is and what information we need and what information we don't need, so that it's there's a kind of a, whether it's tied to strategic goals, to changes, so that, because it seemed to me just to be kind of a, just an, over, an overload of information the last time we did it, at least that was my feeling, and so whether we can really talk at some point about what that day would be like. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Uh, one, it'd, it'd be nice to get the packet of information if we got that before we even go into that meeting, so already pre-prepped when we're looking at it, so that way uh, it becomes more about our questions about what's going on, and also just to, to kind of simplify it. I think I said it before, like making it revolve in a holistic way around each school. How does, you know, here's what Mass Way looks like, here's what Moharamit looks like, the middle school, the high school, and that way it's more of a team approach from you guys on like what's going on there. And and, and then it really focuses more on like the, the big deltas. What are the big changes? Like, you know, here's Mass Way, here's the facilities part, here's the technologies part, here's the academic part. And th these are what has changed over the last year. It would give you an opportunity also academically, okay, we, here's what we found from our data and this is why we're doing it. And so everything can become kind of justified in a, in a holistic way. But well, we can talk about that. We can talk about that. So we can yeah. talk about kind of what that day is like and what the purpose of each presentation is. Because I think I lost track of it. Oh, man. So. Could I say something? Yeah. I think last year was considerably better than the first year. <laughs> well, honestly, we had the cost of safety pins in the budget. So we're moving in the right direction. Um, Coming back around. I would like to see yeah, the big stuff and then the million lines if I want them. <laughs> go to Sue's office and say that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know. We'd be glad to do that approach. Believe me, it's a lot less work for us. Okay. Producing the million lines is grueling. Yeah, but you have them. We do them anyways. Well, we have to produce them and then reproduce them for all of you, right. for all but of ABC, for anybody in the public who wants I <laughs> really wanted to see the million lines, I could go to Sue's office and I could have a pretty short I would, I, would, I would hope that the holistic view that you're talking about, Al, includes basing it on the strategic plan. Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. That's, I mean, that to me, the work that we're doing in August and September is deliberately setting us up for the fall budget season. It just seems, you know, the way it was done before, it seems fragmented. Well, it doesn't really, I mean, yeah. you know, it's a, it just would be easier because it allows you guys all the work. When do we approve the strategic plan? You'll see the first draft operations in uh, August, and then you can have it for two weeks, and then you can beat it up, and we'll revise it, and then you'll get the first draft of academics at the end of September, and you'll have it for two weeks, and you can beat it up. But I'm hoping that the strategic plan you get is, remember, a first attempt that will continuously approve over time. So I'm hoping that the board doesn't become seven editors to the strategic plan, that you've asked the staff to produce it. These are the things that we produce that we think are important, that you'll give it. It's your blessing. You can certainly ask questions, but I'm hoping you don't change it or add it because it kind of defeats the purpose of having staff and community work on them just to have them reshuffled up here. So I just I ask you to consider that. I can't tell you what to do, but it would be really a nightmare to start having seven editors on the strategic plan. Um, on that, and I have something about the big changes idea. The, the one issue I have with that, Jim, is that I know when I was on the technology strategic plan, the question sort of came up, are we creating a, a strategic plan for our pie in the sky? Like what we, we really, if we could create the most phenomenal plan in the world, or the next step up from here. So you're I making, think- You're making a strategic plan that fits the needs of the district where it is today and into the immediate future, which means, you know, for if we use technology as the example, Sarah, you could spend a billion dollars tomorrow on technology and never have everything that's out there. Right. 
So the technology plan isn't a shopping list of let's get the newest and greatest. It's how does that technology support the academic and operation sides of our district? And how does it move us forward academically, fiscally, and facilities-wise? So those, that's how I see it. I don't think any of the plans that you'll see will be pie-in-the-sky stuff. I've, see, I've reviewed everything that Sue's done so far. I've had conversations with Carolyn. It all is making sense. Um, but the other thing I will share with you is the minute you put a strategic plan in writing, there's budgetary considerations to it, and people start going, <gasps> because as an example, I would the real example that we've been working for now in terms of facilities is you know when Sue came on board, she, you know the board authorized the facilities um, study. The district learned there was four million dollars worth of unmet needs. Um, we're down after this summer to a little bit less than I think three million after this school year It'll be that much further down when you see um, Jim Rizicki's strategic plan. We were just working on it this morning with Sue and Jim You'll see a five-year plan and that five-year plan Builds as it has for the last two years continues to invest in the capital improvement of the district because we got so far behind in the district that we're playing catch-up but it'll take us the next five years to get Jim Rizicki's capital improvement budget to the place where it should have been all along, which is our goal is 3% of the overall cost of our capital uh, needs. So um, 3%, if, it, if it was 3% today, Jim Rizicki's budget would be a million dollars. But we know we can't increase the budget that dramatically that quickly. So in the last two years, we've increased it nearly $400,000. Next budget, we, as you saw from Sue's, it's another $200,000. In the next four years, it increases $200,000. And then uh, when it, we get to the fifth year, it's $100,000. And then we just stay at the 3% number once we reach it. So we've been very conservative and very frugal in the way that we've built up his budget. But it's so critically necessary because if you don't do the facilities now, you end up with a $4 million hole and you're not only trying to play catch up, you're trying to be proactive. And um, so it gets, it's, it almost becomes an impossible task. I mean, it's, it's literally going to take us seven years to dig out of the hole of unmet facilities needs. But at the end of that seven years, counting the last two, you will have a, fisc you will have a financially sound facilities budget that will meet the needs of these four buildings the grounds and so forth but it's really it's really tough to play catch up like that because you have what what would happen to us last spring you know a $28,000 roof mounted heater in the middle school goes bonkers and we have to again look inside the budget to see how we can shuffle $28,000 to meet that need because we can't have the gymnasium in that end of the building unheated so that's a long answer to what you asked, but it's that is that's the same process that Sue and I have used. In, you have used in technology. It's the same process that we're using with Carolyn in terms of improvement in academics. The way that I have always looked at a budget in terms of developing a budget is it's better to get half a loaf than no loaf. And in this case, we're getting a fifth of a loaf, but we're making progress. It's two steps forward. It may not be all that Jim Rizicki would like to have tomorrow. But he can see as he's developing a plan that he's going to be there, and at some point, you know, the bu the budget won't be making these astronomical leaps in facilities, um, and that is really the goal that we want. We want these buildings to be in great shape. We have to have the money to do it. And when he's doing his report later today, you can see how he's using the resources he has to really generate, uh, you know, high quality work at a very efficient cost. So not only are we increasing the budget incrementally, but we have a man in charge of the program and employees who are working diligently to use every dollar they can to the maximum uh, potential. So that's the other part of a budget development. It's not just asking the people for money, but using their money as wisely as you possibly can. Yeah, I think we need to move on to the... Do we need to approve the um, budget, budget cal process calendar? Is it... Be nice. Be nice. Yeah. Could I have a motion to approve the budget calendar? It's, I'd like to move to approve the proposed budget process calendar for budget year 2015-16. Moved by Kenny, seconded by Al. Discussion? All those in favor, please raise your hands. I had a question. I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> okay. uh, this is subject to change. Absolutely. Yeah. So to approve a calendar, 
Well, you you will always approve the calendar early, and then there's always going to be times when you add to it or change a date. I mean, this is just to kind of put it out to the public. This is our best guess as to when these dates will happen, but invariably, um, it may be that something you want more information that in, involves another day, or was this past year we had a conflict with the town of Durham and we had to adjust our calendar, and so that'll happen. But it always happens here, and then it's revised and posted. So. You guys control the calendar, to, yeah. and yeah. you, you, so you, you. This is a preliminary yeah. approval. Right. Well, okay. it's a, it's a subject subject yeah. to revision. Yeah. Sure. Um, other comments? All those in favor, please raise your hands. Seven in favor. The student rep in favor. Um, could we have on the computer? Computer, please. Mm -hmm. Well, I put a little memo in the packet for you. Um, we need an approval on that so that we can move forward with it. It's yeah. part of the budget process. We talked about it. Josh is here if you have any questions. Yeah. Um, did you hand out no, some, yes, more detail? Okay. So I'm going to turn over to Josh. Okay, Josh. Up on that. Yeah. Okay. Um, <coughs> good evening, everyone. Mm -hmm. During the budget process this year, <coughs> excuse me, we focused on, um, uh, last year we focused on up updating the network. This year, through the budget process, we talked about updating um, the computer labs, mobile carts, teacher laptops, administrator laptops. Um, and that's what we talked about through the process. The voters passed the budget. We're in the process now. We've selected the equipment. Um, we are working with a leasing company. And <clears throat> as Sue mentioned, one of the things that the auditors, the leasing company, um, all would like to have on record is school board approval of the lease. So that's what we're bringing forward for you tonight. Um, and I believe Sue um, in the board packet was kind of the summary of the lease. Um, the one that we are looking at um, doing, there was a couple options. It's the very top option. It's a 36 month, um, so three year uh, fair market value lease. And basically what that means is at the end of the three years, the leasing company sees value in the equipment and we will turn it back to them and they will resell it or, or do something with it. So the way it actually works is um, if we compare the actual total lease payments over the three years and then look at if we were just to go out and buy this, it's gonna save us about $41,000 over an outright purchase. So the, the advantage to that is that Josh uh, will, his staff will only have machines they're working on that are under warranty at all times. So machines, again, going back kind of to Sarah's initial question about how do we do this, we try to do it in such a way that we can create a uh, revolve, revolving purchase as opposed to, gee, we don't have money to do this this year and we wait 10 years and then we have junk. So this right. process actually not only saves the district money because the company buys back the computers, but it also creates a work environment for the IT staff that eliminates ancient uh, machines, updates, software updates, and so forth. So it's, it's a really a great plan. Yep. Sure. Does that mean like, so in essence we're gonna go on like a three year lifespan of all our computers, we'll just at the end of this, I assume go into another lease Correct. so that we never Correct. have. So the other part of how so this is uh, this is again it's a long time ago we did this budget I can't remember. So of these like five hundred whatever and almost six hundred computers. Yeah. So those are going to the teachers. Is it also fixing like labs or what? what are so this this lease right here is only for laptops. Um, we have updated some fixed computer labs. We actually don't have that many computer labs around the district. A couple of the schools opted at some point, and I'm not sure when, to remove all computer labs, and they only have mobile labs now. Um, but with the laptops, after three years, batteries start going, yeah. and then everyone needs to plug them in, and then you know now we're starting to buy batteries, and so that's why we went with the, the three-year lease, and that's why it's only the, the um, laptops, the desktops, they tend to last a little bit longer. So basically what this is gonna do is, it's gonna give every teacher a laptop, the same model, and then the laptops are gonna be going to update or replace existing mobile carts. Okay. Like for instance at Mohirmet, they have two mobile carts, one in each wing. Whereas at Mastway, they have one fixed lab. So we're gonna add a mobile cart to them, so at least they have similar numbers of computers, because uh, right now they don't have any mobile carts, just that fixed lab. So, and then going through um, 
at the middle school, we have an issue with the building. If you've walked through it, you can't, um, there's places where there's stairs and you can't push a car down there. So right now, like in the winter, or actually all throughout the year, but they have to actually go outside the building, go through the parking <laughs> lot. So what we're trying to do is get enough mobile carts spread out throughout the building so they can service an area. So people aren't bringing them outside or, you know, because we could, in the middle of winter, you could have a slip. And it's just not an area, Josh, it's also per team. Exactly. What we're doing is we're doing um, two per grade level. So that there's one more, enough. One more question. So when yep. you get all this stuff, does that mean we'll have enough laptops? Because I know this smarter no. balance test so it's is coming. The, the, right. And that's why, um, Josh, you can hand that out if you want to. Yep, okay. sure. Um, you'll see that there's a disproportionate number of laptops going to the middle school. Yep, there's extra. And that's largely because of smarter balance so that we can de deliver that assessment in a way that's effective and efficient, which is why we went to two per grade. They're the only school where we have to test every single student. Okay. So this replaces about half of the district's units that are pretty old. And so you saw in Sue's presentation on the budget goals that there was another uh, intent to replace the other half in the upcoming budget. And that um, will get all of the ancient stuff out of the district. And then ja Josh will be in that rotation of of leasing, so la this last budget, it was all of his networking. We upgraded the uh, you know, the uh, broadband in the district. We updated servers. So the first year of this was his getting the system and ready. The second year is now getting all the teacher devices replaced. And the third year would be um, to upgrade the rest of the machines that are in libraries and um, and so forth across the district. And we're also going to be moving. Um, you probably don't remember this from uh, the first big long day event um, of data, but we have about, um, I want to say it was somewhere between 35 and 40 different models of laptops right now, so we'll go down to three. Oh, wow. So in terms of just our being able to manage and support and that consistency when a group of teachers gets together, whether it's in one building or across multiple buildings, everyone has the same thing. We can experience, you know, we shouldn't have to worry about, well, this group's got this model and it can't do this or whatnot. It should really help the teachers out um, throughout the year as well, so. And these are the models? That yeah, those are the three different models. I didn't, I figured you probably didn't need to see all the nitty gritty <laughs> details. <laughs> But what, who's the latitude of the It's um, Dell okay. is what we're looking at. Um, you know, like the model we chose for students, it has a reinforced edge. The keyboard's waterproof. So we're thinking about especially our younger kids. But even up at the high school level, science labs, you know, you have the water stations. If stuff's splashing, just to, there's a lot of little things that went into looking at the different models to make sure that they're um, going to make it. <laughs> so. So we need a motion. We need a motion to approve this recommended lease. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve it's a 36 month lease. Yes. The 36 month uh, computer lease. Good moved by Al, seconded by Denise. The further questions, discussion. I just, it seemed like a great solution to the computer problem. I mean, I would be hard pressed to say, you know, buy five hundred thousand dollars worth of computers at this point, knowing that there's you know. Some Worse, much worse than automobiles as far as yeah. life longevity goes. So. The last district I was in, we did two cycles of a lease just like this yeah. for laptops specifically, just because they take a lot of wear and tear, and right. we we you know the teachers use them daily, and with all the different things that the teachers are doing with grades and looking at data, we really need them. Mm -hmm. You know, so. Thank you, Josh. Yep. Other questions? Thank you. Okay. All those in favor of approving the lease, please raise your hands. Seven in favor, student rep in favor. Motion yeah. passes. Thank you, Josh. Thank you. And um, so, so uh, Tom, the next item is um, facilities updates. Well, student center, but I don't oh, know. I'm sorry. I don't know if you there have is, there is um, one. Well, I mean, Senate's not very active during the summer. <laughs> 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 but, uh, as of step up day, we held elections for the incoming freshman class. And when fall comes and school starts up again, we'll be planning Spirit Week. Great. Okay, thank you. Very good. Thank yep. you. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to step yep. on you. Jim, um, as I alluded to earlier, you know, we're very, actually, I would say we're in the best place we've ever been with Jim's leadership in terms of facilities and maintenance and um, continues to impress both Sue and I with the, not only the work he's doing, but the, the
the morale around our custodial and maintenance staff has increased astronomically as the district has, as you all as a board, have invested in the needs that, that had to be addressed in, internally. So a lot of things are happening and a lot of, a lot of the credit goes to Jim and, and Jamie's leadership. So Jim. Thank you very much, board. Um, thank you, Dr. Morris. I really have our time accepting kudos, um, and this is the intent of this is actually to give that thanks and appreciation and show the hard work that um, the Oyster River maintenance ground <coughs> and custodial staff do on a daily basis. And uh, just like Dr. Morse um, stated, um, the common theme or thread that I wanted to weave through this um, brief PowerPoint is, um, is, is the job that they do and the morale boost, um, because I've certainly noticed quite a bit. So through quite a bit of pictures in here too, I feel that um, pictures speak louder than words. Um, I love to see things in motion. Um, the top right um, picture, if you guys have it, um, is actually a training session that we just did in the library last week. Um, these are really effective. Uh, we get a lot of good input from them. So um, I broke it out into uh, the three different departments, custodial grounds and maintenance. Just like to touch on a little bit of each. Um, I purposely did not include any CIP or budget stuff in here. We <laughs> spoke so much about that throughout the year. So. Um, so I, I wanted to um, just explain a little bit of the challenges that we had and the accomplishments that went with it. Um, the reason why I wanted to talk about challenges because just like all of our jobs, we're not always hunky-dory in the facilities department or any department. So there are things that we overcome or things that have been happening for a while. Um, but in the accomplishment side, we have overcome those challenges um, that I would like to mention. So. This year was an interesting year. We had quite a bit of turnover, uh, mostly all at the middle school on the custodial side. Um, not anything negative, but we had one retire, um, one that took ill and is not gonna be returning um, from a personal illness, and another one that decided to move out of state uh, to pursue um, another personal career. All of those happened to be at the middle school, so there was quite a bit of, of uh, anxiety there. Um, also with um, the second point for long-term outages for personal health reasons. Um, again, these are, are issues with uh, some of the guys' age that um, they receive surgeries or are long-term issues. So we really juggled um, substitutes this year um, and it seemed to mostly hover around the middle school um, for some reason. So it was, it was a challenge. We weren't probably fully staffed at the, at the middle school until about March and that only lasted one month. Um, again, um, Jamie's done a phenomenal job. He's our custodial manager, just managing all that. I'm very impressed with him. The guys really gang together, cleaned in areas when there was events and activities going on. So um, kudos to them for that. Challenges also uh, for the event coverage over at our high school. Um, with all the things going on, on the weekends, um, there was only three guys um, in this building, or, or three employees in this building that were actually wanting the overtime as a rotation. Um, the other ones didn't. So between all the events at this building, we only had three people. So basically, people were working almost every weekend. And it wasn't really about an overtime thing. It was about getting burned out. I wanted them to be ready for work on Monday and, and make it through the week. So that was a big challenge. And uh, I'll talk about the accomplishment in that end. Safety training, we, we, we lacked um, this year. Maybe it was just um, my new beginning here. We had a lot of stuff going on. We didn't schedule much. Um, but um, group training is really beneficial, and we've scheduled some throughout the summer. And uh, just uh, last week, or um, two weeks ago, we just had two workplace injuries, which um, were, were, could have been avoidable. So that just reinforces that our goal for the upcoming year is, is additional safety training. <coughs> our goal is zero accidents. Um, we preach to them, you leave work the same way you come in, and. Um, we're, we're hitting all those, those issues that seem to be common. Um, so those were some of our challenges this year on the custodial side. <clears throat> some of the accomplishments is that um, we took a lot of careful evaluation of the, the new people that we're interviewing for the, the positions in the district. Uh, we include uh, Jay quite a bit in those interviews, so we're all making a collective decision. So I thought that was pretty key. Um, our space care cleaning system um, was implemented not only at Moherman at the beginning of the year, but at Massway in December. Um, we have uh, plans for this fall for the middle school and high school. Um, I think some of you guys know about it. It incorporates microfiber, sustainability. We use like 80% less water on a daily basis just to clean rooms. And um, it's more um, ergonomically correct. There's a whole litany of stuff, but it's, it's a pretty big deal to the guys. 
Um, we did regular head custodian meetings. Once a month, we'd all meet at a different location, just talk about things around the district, what our challenges are. Um, we had some great feedback and, and great momentum. Um, consortial inspections, um, not only done by the supervisor, but also the head custodian. It's great when your own peer can kind of evaluate things on a daily basis, which was certainly key. Um, daily safety briefs. This is, uh, it's, a, it's a safety topic um, that is just a, what we call like a five minute toolbox talk, meaning that um, when the second shift custodians come in, they all get together, not only talk about events and activities that may be up ahead of them that night, but it's just like a, say like ladder safety is the topic of the week. And it's just like a, a quick bullet point. Hey, when you're up on ladders, <coughs> make sure you have three points of contact. Just these simple safety things that they do at the beginning to hopefully avoid the injury. It's all kind of a mental thing. If you're aware at the beginning of your shift, you may identify something that may be a potential safety hazard to not only them, but also maybe a student or staff member. Um, and I think because of that, we had absolutely no workplace injuries the entire school year. So um, I'm, I'm really proud of the guys for that. So no slips and falls, no shoveling or back injuries um, this, sum, this winter. So it, it really, um, I, I felt, um, I wanted to capitalize on that until we had the two slips and falls um, for summer for the stripping process, but I'm pretty proud of them for going the whole year without um, an injury. Um, facility Masters Conference, that's an annual New England conference for custodians, maintenance, and ground staff. It was held over in Portsmouth. Um, Sue's on the, uh, the ASBO committee, which hosts that. Um, it's the first time that some of the guys went to a big exhi exhibition like that, and they picked up a lot of good um, strategies amongst other peers at different different districts and uh, we wanted to capitalize on that as well and have a meeting afterwards as a follow-up like hey what did you guys learn is there anything that might benefit in the district and uh, it was just great that they had a voice and uh, we actually put into practice some of the things that they learned um, a big one is we encourage the custodians to identify um, repairs that are needed um, our goal was um, self-identified work orders, which I'll explain just briefly in the next couple of slides with uh, as far as maintenance. But the more stuff we can identify as a department and amongst our own staff, I think the better. Um, actually, I know the better. And uh, it's all about efficiency in our department is actually doing repairs and corrections before it's actually brought on by a staff member. So um, it's, it's always um, creating awareness um, in your area. And um, the morale boost through the strategic planning session. Um, we all, uh, uh, we'll talk about this a little bit more, but Sue and uh, Dr. Morse um, did a phenomenal job just engaging all of our complete staff all together in a room. And um, it, it was just, just talking about goals and we went up and um, people were a little bit nervous at first, but um, they, they really, they, I believe that really hit home with them. That, that I, I think they really felt like a sense that um, not only the superintendent, but you guys at the district level actually care about their job, that actually um, are, uh, they have a voice that is gonna be listened to. And uh, we were very um, fortunate after that meeting that they, they felt really positive about their job and, and, and very, very um, hopeful about the future. So that alone, I, I believe, just did a lot. I mean, suddenly people had some spring in their step and a smile on their face, which is, which is very important to me, I believe, in customer service. Um, onto our grounds, um, very quick about these pictures. Uh, we did, uh, that's a picture of the Mastway Courtyard um, beautification project. Just to the right, um, we have a new uh, um, uh, walk behind deck mower. Um, that was a demonstration from the company that we bought it from. We did sod um, improvements on, our, on the varsity soccer field where we actually um, saved quite a bit of money by doing the, the removal itself. And then finally graduation, which, um, Obviously, I wasn't here last year, but everybody said that it was a really big deal, and boy, it was a really big deal. So um, um, I know that Todd spoke on that last, uh, last meeting, so I really appreciate his kudos to the department because it was quite a bit of work. So some of our challenges, um, again, may have been identified not only by our own crew, but maybe some of the other um, principals and, and staff around was um, keeping up with the mowing schedule around athletic needs. Spring is very, very busy, so is fall. Seemed that um, Moharmet Mo and Massway and other buildings may have lacked and maybe have gotten overgrown. Um, so that was a big issue going into the year, into the um, spring especially. Fertilizing products and schedule, um, things may not have been looking green or 
Uh, we had some weeds in places, also uh, fertili fertilizing products. We wanted to incorporate more organics into that program. Uh, vehicle maintenance and longevity, we had a, a truck that went down a month after I started. We had a van that went down, two vans that went down um, right in the winter time. So it was a real struggle this year with our old, our old buses. Um, mulch bed maintenance, just things getting overgrown. Um, graduation setup week was, was a challenge, um, of which I heard in prior years. Field wear and tear, just not a lot of corrective action being put in place with new seed and that schedule. And then plowing always seemed to be um, kind of like an overtime and, a, and a, um, just a, a logistic um, challenge for them that I really wanted to hone on. So um, our accomplishments in that area was uh, our ground staff performed cor corrective maintenance over the, um, the winter season. Um, and the maintenance slides, uh, we were down a maintenance staff um, person that decided to move on um, right smack dab in the January February area so that was a challenge but these grounds guys really really buckled up and and did a lot of these work orders so we wouldn't get behind so and a lot of them they did it on their own um, we hired a new seasonal groundskeeper in uh, in May this year and uh, besides um, <laughs> a little challenge over at Massaway in the front with some uh, so what was thought to be weeds, um, besides that, um, that position has been working <laughs> out really well. Going. I'm Don't sorry, sir. <laughs> I knew you were. I, I, so, um, Rare perennials. <laughs> so, but that's um, been going very, very well. That third person, I believe, is really making a difference in our overall um, efficiency. Uh, we've been having positive feedback about our athletic fields. Um, I've, I've gotten a lot of even uh, parents and just walkers by of the, of the field saying, hey, they look really good. And, that's huge to me. Um, we've been, uh, one of our grounds guys is a, was a mechanic um, for 15 years before he came here. And um, I asked, I don't know why he was never asked, but it's like, hey, do you want to do some in-house repairs and oil changes and regular maintenance and upkeep of our vehicles? He said, sure, no problem. So we're avoiding a big cost factor about going down to John's or um, uh, what we have been doing, I guess, in the past. So, and I, I think it gives them a sense of pride that, hey, they did this, you know, they're maintaining it, able to take care of things really quickly. Um, we did have a reduction in snow removal, OT, and supplies um, this year um, over last year, even the winter that we had. Um, I believe that a lot of it was due to the Moharimut um, plowing. We contracted that out this year, and it went extremely well. We plan to continue with that. Um, but also the increased communication. Every time there was a storm, I sat down with the guys and said, hey, what's the game plan? Um, let's, where do we start? Let's track the storm by storm. When are we going to start? When are we going to end? And a lot of them, they are the ones that said, we don't need the overtime. Do you mind if we you know, just leave after we're done just to get some rest before the storm comes in? I really appreciated that because it wasn't, it's not all about money or overtime to them or, or getting the buck. It was about doing the right thing, being well rested to get out there and a plow on the middle of the night just to keep up with the schools. So that was, uh, that was key. Um, we did uh, the varsity field. Um, we just did that um, about two weeks ago. Uh, we had some bare spots in, in the field. Um, it was a con big concern of Corey. Um, to save about $1,000, we're, we're the ones that got the tractor out and dug all that stuff up and prepped it for the sod company. They came, laid it down in a day, and we got grass grown. Or we have nice sod area, but it's been catching very well. We're going to be ready for fall sports. Um, ground staff also replaced the Mohair um, gate opener. At, I know that if you guys don't know what it is, it's that electronic gate towards the, uh, the road. This was a really big deal with the fire department and police department in Madbury, and um, they did it. We that fifteen hundred dollars is is a, a savings from our quote for an outside contractor to come in and do it. We bought the materials. They said we'll put it in, no problem. It went it went seamless, and then we uh, started doing more in depth playground inspections on a monthly basis. Um, it's where they actually take the depth of the, um, the mulch beds, they, they go around to every fixture, they sign off on it, there's an accountability. And uh, we've actually gotten quite a bit of uh, feedback right on that preventive maintenance about things that we need to take care of before it was identified by a staff or student member. So um, that is a monthly inspection. Um, I have all the reports in my office. That's a big um, uh, talking point when we meet um, regularly with Dr. Morris and Sue. 
Um, so that's uh, that is being done for the for the children's protection. Uh, for maintenance services, um, just some things in motion. Some of our challenges, like I said, was the, our staff turnover in January. Um, out of a, um, a team of two maintenance guys, when one leaves, that's 50% of the, the district kind of going on man. But um, again, we, we rose up together. Um, the quality of work completed, that was a kind of a big deal. I usually rely on the principals for a lot of the feedback in the building, how the guys are doing, how the response is, are they doing a quality job. Um, and so I know that some of the quality of, of the stuff that happened in the past wasn't the best. So we try to attack that. Obviously, the vehicle issues, um, the vans were, um, again, losing two in a matter of a month was a challenge. Uh, work order respon repair response time um, and the attitude of the staff, I, I got to say, um, since we had that turnover, the, the attitude of the maintenance staff has, has really changed. Obviously, a new person, fresh blood on board, is uh, suddenly things can get done um, in a more timely and, and positive manner. Um, again, I think customer service is everything in a deficiency it, when you're dealing with a deficiency. So we try to really work together with that. Um, and then finally, the ambition to tackle larger repairs. It seems like every time I, since I didn't know the guys too well, it's like, hey, can you guys handle this work order? I'd sign it to them and be like, they'd come back and just say, you know, I never really did that pump before. I never really, you know, gone the in-depth in plumbing like that before. And it was like, well, you know, let's try it take you know you just need a little bit of uh, um, ambition to do it and you know some of it was even going on YouTube or asking some of our vendors that we normally use hey how do we do this and I gotta say since that day that especially with the pumps that I'll mention shortly he's like no problem I'll take care of them from now on and we're actually able to save a ton of money um, many items contracted out one of the phrases that I just despise hearing is we always did it this way or this is always a Palmer Sicard thing, or this is always a, um, you know, a, a, a plumbing contractor thing. I, I, I can't stand that. So I challenge every time they send, say that to me, saying, well, that's usually a red flag. Hey, let's try something different, or let's try to do it ourselves. So um, same thing, we hired a maintenance um, technician. Um, we decided to um, put that, that on second shift. We felt that would be a better um, use of this time. We're able to there's no downtime as far as the school day is concerned. And we had um, a tremendous increase of response time and productivity. Work orders were getting done so quickly. Um, principals were happy that you know they can make a phone call at 2 o'clock. Hey, we got a plumbing leak somewhere, and it'll be fixed that night. So um, that has worked out tremendous, and we're going to pick that up again during the school year. Uh, we hired a part-time weekend events maintenance technician for this building. Um, this has not only um, lighten the burden and the burnout of the staff members here, but in the meantime, we were able to save um, a lot of the overtime money um, and the producti productivity on the weekends that there wasn't events going on. We had them doing painting, repairs, and other things in this building, which is we're reaping those rewards now since we're not spending so much time over the summer doing painting in this building. So that has really um, has been able to um, and be a benefit to us. Um, again, feedback from the um, principals and other staff members is uh, we have a quicker response time and they feel that the quality is increased. I, I agree. Um, all of our, our maintenance staff attended um, Siemens training um, and Siemens was gracious to provide that free of charge. Um, that was uh, more how to deal with the computer ad end of things, how to troubleshoot things quickly um, from what it says on the HVAC system. HVAC system that we see um, in front of us, how to make changes, um, schedule things. So that was that was uh, four days worth of training. Um, a part of the the Airmark uh, renewal, um, we um, gave the um, school district twenty thousand dollars for and a cash grant for a new vehicle, um, which on the other page is uh, we purchased a a Ford Transit, which is a lot more reliable, way better on gas, and just practical for the job. Has uh, maintenance compartments and shelving in there and ladder rack um, and but it just doesn't have Bluetooth which the guys wanted so <laughs> um, it's it's been a, a great not to have a vehicle issue so um, we did two major plumbing repairs at the middle school um, saving twelve hundred dollars um, again these were uh, um, we had a vent that was clogged and leaking um, and this was in the lower boiler room which now is going to be repaired this summer so 
uh, but it was just great the response time and, and was able to save that money. Um, the circulator pumps, which I alluded to before, uh, uh, he did two of them um, here at this building, um, saving about a thousand bucks. Pumps are usually about six hundred dollars each. Um, the rebuild kits are a little bit under a hundred dollars, and then the time you put in. So that's how I arrived at that number. Uh, we did a uh, repaired the uh, fire pump water line at Massway. Our quote was uh, twenty-four hundred dollars. We spent three hundred dollars in supplies. This was carefully planned with uh, the Lee Fire Department. And uh, it worked out great. And the guys are just happy that they were not only able to save the money, but that they did the repair themselves and it's, and it's working. Jamie, our um, custodial manager, he also has a HVACR license. And uh, he's uh, very um, knowledgeable in the area of refrigeration. Um, he was able to uh, take the guys and uh, kind of teach them and some real life training on how to replace a compressor on the AC unit um, here at this building for the main office. Um, we saved about uh, $3,000 on that total project. Um, unit ventilator motor install over at the middle school, we saved about $700 too. And these are all prices that, um, and how I, some of the things that, um, like this on the, on the bigger scheme of things is, I, I, like when Siemens comes through and they say, hey, you may want to look at replacing this down the road, or this pump, or this motor, I always ask them for a price, what's going to be with install, and then I, always ask them for an itemized bill of things that we can pick out and do ourselves just to lower the cost even more. And uh, I thought the guys would think I was really cheap by doing that, but you know what? When they're involved in it, they can put their stamp and their name on making that somebody smile or correcting a long-term issue. It just speaks volumes and uh, really gives them the, that morale boost that we spoke about. Finally, our other items to mention, and this is, uh, I think I have uh, one or two more slides after that. Sorry for taking your time. But uh, we're, we uh, decided that we're going to be project managing the restroom renovation uh, for the middle school. Uh, we budgeted $90,000 uh, for that project. That was based on history of the other uh, bathrooms that were renovated. Um, we're using in-house staff, and by managing it ourselves, we're, we, we pretty much set up the vendors for the demo, set up different vendors for the uh, floor and wall tile. We bought all of our um, sinks, toilets, urinals, uh, partitions, and everything from a different vendor. Um, at uh, wholesale. So we anticipate saving about $30,000 off that whole entire project by doing it ourselves. I would be remiss if I didn't say that the other bathrooms had a little bit more in-depth plumbing where they removed a wall and rebuilt the, um, the plumbing lines behind it um, in previous years, which could have antiquated to a little bit more, ne more money, maybe not $30,000, but I think we feel a lot better um, using those not having to do that to the other bathrooms because all of the um, pipe inspections that we did um, behind the walls for those bathrooms that we're renovating were in great shape. So why spend the money when we don't, we don't have to at that point? And plus we're not paying an overhead for an engineer and a project manager on it. So um, we anticipate um, using some of those savings for other the uh, capital improvement projects or, or other um, things that may come up. Hopefully not a rooftop unit that goes down. <laughs> um, we've we played a part in the Moharmet um, calf edition. Um, our our crew um, worked with our contractor. This is one of those things that we talked about at the table of uh, money saving opportunities and what we could do with in-house staff. So we've um, we saved quite a bit of money by putting down and taking down the curtain, the basketball nets, the insulation, the wall pads. Uh, we're also going to be reapplying those, but Again, it's just one, another one of those things that the guys actually have their stamp of, uh, of um, um, they've worked on. So our grounds crew, we power washed uh, Maxway exterior um, um, in prep for the wall painters. It's one of those things that we were going to get, um, um, it was going to be over the budget, and we were able to add, do it in-house and meet our budgeted amount. Self-identified work orders, again, I spoke about um, custodians and other staff members identifying other deficiencies and making a work order themselves as they're in the building doing other repairs and cleaning. Um, I meet with Siemens on a, on a monthly basis uh, where we talk about our, our current state, where some of their challenges that they see, where we are on X, Y, and Z. These are the issues that we had. Are they corrected? So um, we spend a, about a good two or three hours every month going through the, the, every single building um, what's outstanding and what what has been corrected. Um, I meet with the principals regularly. This is a great time, um, not only to uh, to talk about things, but um, 
I, I just got to give a plug for them. I, I, I've never worked with principals that were just so engaging and so uh, helpful, um, so understanding, and uh, you got a really great set of principals here um, to work with. So I look forward to those times. Um, middle schools uh, service Palooza by the students. We really wanted to be involved in that, not only for pro providing the mulch and materials, um, but just uh, um, really coordinating with the middle school staff about what they wanted to do and said, yes, we could do that. Yes, we could do that. We'll help you out on this. And we've, we've, we provided that stuff for them. We coordinated um, those events, even though the date was canceled um, for another couple days. We, uh, it, it was just a great thing. We want to expand next year. And uh, they also asked me what other areas around the district we can do. So I think that's great. Anything done by the student and community service is fantastic. Um, our staff engagement has increased, um, again, through the strategic planning um, process. Um, couple, this, the bottom left picture is actually one of those sessions um, with our staff. We, sometimes we spend upwards uh, to two hours with a, a smaller team just discussing these things. And uh, the, the input has been, has been great. Last summer, we did a uh, appreciation cookout. Um, we plan to do another one um, this summer. Um, and obviously have uh, probably about two hours before the noontime hour, we'll have some, uh, some training sessions as a whole group together. And then I think I've already talked about in-depth uh, playground ins inspections performed. So, um, so that's pretty much as uh, our department wide. Here's our, just some of the work order data, um, just to give you an idea of what um, we have come in on a monthly basis of requested means, how many work orders are put in, Obviously completed is, is how many we get done. Um, some of these, if uh, we get a work order on the 30th of the month, um, it does, when it's completed, it does not count towards that month that it was put in. So even though we do, I don't see any on, on here, there may be a month or two where we may have like say like 60 work orders requested, but 65 of them completed. That's because we go on the true date when that's complete, um, completed and goes in that month. So as you can see um, before, um, um, on 2013, January, up until about August, um, there was no self-identified work orders. Again, I'm not saying that they weren't, but in the work order system, that box was not checked. So um, when we first instituted this, I checked the box and said, hey guys, if you do, even if you do something that's not in a work order form, but takes a little time, like a repair, put it, a work order in with the time that it took you to do it, just so we have a record that you actually took care of something. And by doing it on a work order, it gives us uh, uh, some hard data. So um, by doing that and um, just giving them, like, hey, that we're doing stuff, uh, we've, <coughs> we've steadily increased the amount of self unidentified work orders that have been put in. Um, obviously, you could see um, we're almost over 50% this year alone. That means that it's working. Custodians are putting in work orders. Maintenance guys, they're here to repair a bubbler, and they walk by and they say, wow, that doesn't look right, or that those floor tiles are chipped, <coughs> and they'll get on there and put a, I love that, that there's reinvestment going on into, it's not only job security for them to pick out things that need to be repaired, but it's just that watchful eye at, on the district. Even our grounds guys, too, and I like people to put in work orders for even ground stuff. Pe you know, staff member drives into the parking lot and sees something outside that, you know, a damaged uh, sign that's bent over or a tree limb hanging down. I want that custodian to put in a work order for the ground screw to take care of before it's identified by somebody else. So um, second shift is really good. Sometimes I come in the morning, I leave, when I leave at 5.30 or so, you know, I have no work orders. And then when I come in the morning, there's like five work orders put in that night just from second shift custodians and, and that, I, that I enjoy, so. Um, I do have to, uh, on the next slide, this is just a work orders by building, just so you can kind of get an idea of um, what the, the needs look like in the school. Um, just so you know, um, uh, from the last slide too, April and May of this year were a lot higher than the trend. Um, that's because we received um, soap, <coughs> paper towel, and um, toilet paper dispensers, and um, I wanted them to account for their time installing those because it does take, take some time. Um, there's, when you take an old dispenser out of the wall, there might be some wall repair that needs to be done. And I wanted them to put in, like, take a tally uh, over April break of how many, how many they did and how long it took. Uh, Mohermit, maybe there was just a mix of communication. 
and they put in a work order for every single room, every single dispenser that they did. <laughs> so, so I was, I didn't want to skew more data and really mess around with it. So I kept it in, but it was, it was about thirty more work orders just from O'Hareman alone than we're used to, and that was the. In case there was any questions on that, that was it. So, and that was the increase basically from April to May district wide. So, um, we felt that. That was a good accountability of, of their time because sometimes they did stuff during their normal shift that night. They tackle a couple of dispensers or patch or paint some drywall after taking a dispenser down. So uh, that's it. Thank you very much. I'm sorry that I went over the time. I know I can talk too much. Okay. Thank you very thank much you. for that report and um, thank you for the leadership and direction you provide to facilities and thanks to your dedicated staff. Thank you. Um, you know, your report's very complete. Um, would it be helpful um, in future reports where you do the work orders, um, I'm sh because the complexity and time involved in a particular work order, I'm sure, is very, very different, mm -hmm. um, to break them down to categories. I just think from my job, you know, it, I code differently whether I see a rash that takes me a minute or right. I see a congestive heart failure with complication that, you know, and, and I'm wondering if that might give us a sense of, you know, maybe work orders look the same between, let's say, Massaway and Mohair, mm -hmm. but maybe incredible more things are going wrong at a bigger depth, of, let's say, Massaway, and that might help to break that down and okay. make it more visible. Oh, like uh, HVAC or plumbing or electrical, yeah. kind or, of broken out by... A, a complexity. You know, okay. you can maybe rate something as simple, not that time consuming, something right. moderate, more time consuming, something okay. complex, extensive, and, and get an idea of you know, what, what's happening. Okay, and I can also, I enter the data based on the time it took for them to complete that as well. Mm -hmm. So, because we had maybe just 10 orders, uh, work orders at Massway, but 20 at Moharamid, the ones at Massway could have been so much more in depth and been, exactly. you know, 50 hours worth of, worth of repairs Rather than over changing there, so. the, you know, right. the fixtures, right. But that's, yeah, exactly what I was trying to get at. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. And I, I would uh, encourage you guys, again, don't take my word for anything that you see here. Uh, feel free, go up to a custodian, maintenance, or grounds person and ask them how things are going. And I, I would want, they would give you an, an accurate picture. I believe I en encompassed that, but um, I, I encourage you guys to not only thank them when you see them, but also um, ask them how it's going. And I, and I, just don't take my word for it. <laughs> so when I was when I read this report before I came in here, what really struck me, you know, especially after it was so depressing when we first got that facilities report and I read that, and the best thing when I looked at this is the self-reporting and the skills that you've added to people because when you tend to, I mean, that number that we keep throwing out there, the four million dollars of capital improvement, it's not static and right. it's like. But you know you don't want to get behind, and that trend of self-reporting and fixing mm -hmm. ensures that we don't get behind. That we've always clearly identified, and we're, I hope we're never going to get another report like that where there's all these things that have been left for a right. long time, seemingly that you know right. we won't get behind this. It was great to see, and that's what I do with Siemens with all the HVAC stuff. Where are we? When were those filters changed? I need to know. This is something that I'm accountable to. So your guy, you guys as a board are gonna hold my feet to the fire if something goes wrong, but I'm gonna hold their feet to the fire. We not only pay them, but um, that's their job as well, so. Other questions? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Okay, moving to, um, <clears throat> there are no superintendent's actions. So we have uh, board actions. Uh, so, could I have a motion to accept the resignation of the Oyster River High School speech and language pathologist? Now, I'd like to make a motion to accept the resignation of the Oyster River High School speech and language pathologist. Moved by Al, seconded by Kenny. Is there discussion on this? Hearing none. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Seven in favor. The student half in favor. Um, we have the motion to affirm the hiring of two Oyster River High School teachers for six. 610 Science and Special Education. No. I'd like to make a motion to affirm the hiring of the point six Science and uh, Special Ed teacher at the high school. Moved by Al, seconded by Kenny. Discussion on this? All those in favor, please raise your hand. Seven in the affirmative, the student rep voting in the affirmative. 
A motion to affirm the hiring of the Assistant Director of Special Services. Al? I'd like to make a motion to affirm the hiring of the Assistant Director of Special Services. Moved by Al. Seconded by Kenny. All discussion? All those in favor? Oh, wait a second. I actually did. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to be you know. I have a question, actually, on this. And, and it doesn't have to necessarily be addressed now. Maybe we could just in the well, future. I, I've kind of lost track of what the structure is of the special services. So I, I know sure. Catherine's at the top. And yep, and there's two assistants. One is um, shared between the high school and the middle school, and the other one is shared between the elementaries and a little bit of the middle school. We cut one of those positions my first year. So the buildings are shared. So I think it's been moved and seconded. Is there a further discussion? No. All those in favor of um, affirming the hiring of the Assistant Director of Special Services, please raise your hands. Seven in the affirmative, the student rep in the affirmative. A motion to affirm the hiring of two Oyster River Middle School Grade 5 teachers. Any? I'd like to make a motion that we uh, approve the hiring of two Oyster River Middle School Grade 5 teachers. Moved by Kenny, seconded by Al. Um, is there discussion on this? Denise? Yes, I have a question, um, Jim. I was wondering if you could just explain the process in terms of um, when staff uh, move positions internally. I'd be glad to, Denise. Um, protocol that I put in place when I became superintendent, if, is, if a staff member wants to move from their current position to a position that's open, they have to apply for that position um, as if they were new to the district. and um, they compete for that position against outside applicants. So, for example, one of our fifth grade teachers was certified in art. The art opening happened. She applied for the art position, but we also had uh, made her compete against the marketplace. So that when we end up hiring an art teacher, we can say with a straight face, we hired the best candidate for that position. And um, so we do that now across the district. So we do have an obligation to interview a, a, a current staff member, but no obligation to hire them for an open position. And at the middle school this year, and at the high school, we did have, in, when we posted, for example, the special ed classroom position here at the high school, our current assistant director applied for the teaching position because she wanted to get, to get out of administration and go back to teaching. When we opened the art position, we had a current staff member, fifth grader who, fifth grade teacher who applied for the art position, she got it. Um, when we opened the tech position, the tech ed position at the middle school, a current fifth grade teacher applied for it, competed with the field, and was uh, granted the, the transfer. Um, so what we do is we try to keep it all very open. The interview teams involved, teachers and, and administrators, and then ultimately the principal makes a recommendation to me. So it's a, it's a very above board process, no guarantees. We tell staff there's no guarantees other than they will be interviewed for the position. Um, but in the end, the interview team makes a recommendation to the principal who makes a recommendation to me. So transfers like that don't show up here because there's no cost associated with them because we already are paying that staff member. Only new staff are showing up in these reports. Oh, I was going to say, so they continue the same salary, so there's Correct. no salary change. There's no salary change. When the fifth grade teacher <clears throat> became an art teacher, she carries her salary with her. Okay. So in the case of Mr. Silverio, you determined that he had the tech background that was appropriate for this tech position? Correct. They, yeah. we, only, we only put people who, in positions that they're certified to do. So mm -hmm. for him to be in that position, he had to be certified by the state of New Hampshire. Okay. My own sense is that it would be good for us to have at least a communication that this shift has occurred. Because I think otherwise, if you go out in the community and sit, somebody says, I hear Mr. Silverio's the new tech person, and we, you know, there's nothing in this record to, for even for us to know that that we'd shift like has that. occurred. And I think it would have been good also to see some background you know, that he had for that position. I think I'd be I, glad to do that. I haven't done that in 25 years, but there's no reason not to do it. Well, I'd be glad to do it. 
I, I also have a question. Did, I, I guess I lost it. I went back and I was trying to go through that. When did the tech person resign? Because I don't ever remember retired. us. It was part of the retirement. Oh, it was the retirement. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I was like, because I was trying to find that. I, I couldn't, I looked at this and I couldn't figure out what was going on. So I agree with Tom. It should have been that there was, in these motions, it should have been a motion to well, do Well, you wouldn't want those as motions. You're, okay. not, you're not hiring them. Okay. It's a transfer, so I think that the idea that Tom's alluded to, where I put in the report that I've authorized the transfer of a person from one position to the other, makes perfectly good sense. But you don't want to take action on an employee you already have taken action. No, yeah, just as long as we, the, it, there needs to be like a trail. Like I couldn't follow the trail of what was going on; sure. it wasn't clear. And it, you'd have a similar nomination summary, no. right? Be, no, no I would even just, though they're interviewed, I right? just they, I would just do a report, just put it in the report. I would just do a memo. That's that gives Tom and Al and others the ability to track what happened. It wouldn't be you wouldn't want to take board action. And for clarity, the one of the fifth grade teachers that we've approved was working just with a one year contract. Correct. She was so a that permanent became substitute. A hire. Correct. Got it. Are there other questions about the motion for the affirming the hiring of the two Oyster River Middle School fifth grade teachers? Are you ready to vote on that? Okay. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Seven in favor, the student rep in favor. Um, could I have a motion to affirm the hiring of the Oyster River Middle School um, Middle School school psychologist? Yeah. Motion to approve the Oyster River Middle School high school psychologist. Moved by Al, seconded by Kenny. Discussion, questions? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your hand. Seven in the affirmative, student rep voting in the affirmative. A motion to affirm the, pro we've already done that, right, the lease? Right. Okay. Yep. Um, <clears throat> motion to approve the policies for first read. Right. Should we take a five minute break? Lunch out or? Um, no, I'm okay. You're okay? All right, yep. let's just make sure. We're close to okay. the end I just, of the yeah. lease. I think most of the policies that are before us are pretty Straightforward. Mm -hmm. um, so, could, unless people would want to separate them out, we could move them as, as a block. Side. So, would you want to make that motion out? I'd like to make a motion to approve policy uh, GC, CBC, Family uh, and Medical Leave Act, policy DIA, Fund Balance. I need to make this Here. bigger. I can't make it. You never read it. Uh, uh, policy DID, Fixed Assets, and policy DM. Cash in schools uh, for first read. We moved as a block these four policies by Al, second by Denise. Um, are there discussions, questions, clarifications that people need? Uh, I just have a question about the cash in school, mm. and it is just based on experience with PTO stuff. And is it's not mentioned in here? Is that? Intentional? Is it not? I mean, are they? Where do they fall? Well, they really are falling independent of us. Okay. I mean, it would it's be incredibly good practice for them to do what we do, but they're not required to follow okay. our policy. Okay. Other questions, Maria? Uh, we did add on the DIA. Um, the board will authorize authorize spending at the end of the year. We did put uh, in some language facilities plan emergency situations and unique opportunities, and this was based on Al's comments last time and my concerns as well. Good. Just um, back to the contingency fund. Was okay. there did any money go into the contingency fund this year? We did not add additional money into it. I think the previous year we put money. We did, in, yeah. but not this. Okay. Okay. Correct. Okay. <coughs> we ready to vote? Okay. Um, all those in favor of approving these four policies, please raise your hands. Seven in the affirmative. Student rep in the affirmative. Okay. So. Uh, School board committee updates. Oh, and Denise. Um, long range planning. Excuse me, just let me get my paper. Here. 
okay, um, which we did talk a little bit about. Um, we had the principals attend the last meeting. It's not the right report. And um, also we had the um, realtor that had also attended last time as well. Hold on one second. I almost have it. Um, Allison Mueller. And so she um, was there as well. And um, the number of home sales have remained on par with last year's. So in terms of numbers, um, if that translates to similar numbers of students, we can expect to have the similar number, you know, even though they haven't shown up yet um, in terms of addition, but in terms of the number of home sales, it's really on par with last year. Um, there were 70 home sales that were closed year to date uh, compared with 73 in the same time period last year, and there are another 39 properties under contract. Um, so yeah, that, that definitely gets back to, you know, where are, where are these families? Are they registering? Um, we did talk again about the, the letter um, to welcome new families. I do think the idea of maybe also just distributing some kind of an informational sheet, you know, if we can do that, that sounds like it might be helpful. Um, uh, Todd did talk about how Barrington is already at the um, uh, 15, it's a 15, 16 year that they're, st they're already at that number. Um, let's see, anything else? Um, one of the things that we had asked, and, and Lisa Allison looked into uh, as far as the new um, apartment buildings going up around Durham, and whether any of those would be, I mean, even though they're geared for students, you know, whether there was an expectation that families might move into them, but apparently, <coughs> according to the uh, Landlord Association, um, those units, those apartments are geared pretty much for college students, and they're not anticipating families moving into those apartments. So it was one thing that we got. And I think that was about it. Our next meeting is going to be um, August 4th. Are there, Maria? Policy Committee, I've talked to the chair. This is requesting that we schedule an additional meeting just to talk about the class size policy, which the is a big philosophical monetary uh, driving policy. So we're in the process of trying to set up that meeting. And uh, <clears throat> in the earlier memo said that, you know, it was to transform the policy or something. It's, you know, whatever we decide to do with the policy. So um, are there committee? Yeah. So that's what it, in the policy committees trying to meet to discuss that policy, or is this going to be a general no. board? Well, I, think meeting? General, I, think, I, think, I think the feeling is that it's such an important issue that for them to spend a lot of time creating okay. policy without feedback from the entire right. board, then right. it, it, What's it, the it, it's, not, it's not useful right. way to proceed. That we would need to kind of give some guidelines to them and you know create a, a, a consensus, then they would come back with language to articulate so the consensus. We're going to determine a date for that meeting? Yeah, I think, or, I or think it's going to be part of the agenda for one of our meetings? I think we're going to try to set up a special meeting for just a, another meeting. Another, <laughs> another meeting. meeting. <laughs> special meeting. <laughs> another meeting. Thank you, Maria. They're all special. It wasn't meeting. a capital special meeting. <laughs> 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 yeah. uh, a meeting <laughs> with that specific focus. Uh, and how is that going to be? Is, are we going to get a memo just to sort of, is this a good date for you? I think, I think there's something circulated. I, th I think uh, Wendy said something oh, I out. Yeah. I, that was in there? I read that. <laughs> I couldn't yeah. understand yeah. it. Yeah. So, yeah, so. Okay, I'll look for that. Okay, so that'll, that'll be okay. probably set within the next few days, I would think. <laughs> Other committee updates? Um, okay, public comment? None? Okay, future meetings. We have... Uh, Regular meeting on the 20th, uh, manifest meeting on the 30th, and then we'll be s scheduling that meeting to discuss the um, policy. the uh, class size policy. Okay. Now, we will be having a non-meeting, so do we adjourn first and then go to the non-meeting? Do we have to make a move? I'm not sure. It's for this. 
So for non-public, we have to well, we get the whole procedure. We need off. to go to non-public and then come back and then adjust. We're not, we're not, going, we're not going to non-public. No, I, I know, but I'm, I'm thinking a non-meeting would probably operate under the same. That's principle. not. It's, that's mm. not. The board <laughs> just declares a recess and goes into non-meeting. Okay. Okay. I thought you had to have a lawyer present at non-meetings. No. It doesn't require a lawyer present. We talked about strategies related to negotiation, so mm -hmm. it's okay. the law. So we just adjourn and then go into? You take a recess and then come back in public to adjourn. Okay. Okay, so we'll take a recess now to go into a non-meeting session to discuss the strategy for negotiation with respect to collective bargaining for ORPAS and ORBDA. Okay. I ask a question, and I just want to be clear. Um, in in non-public, the first A in non-public, it talks about compensation. So this is different than than that. Cause I, I I always I'm, and I don't mean to be contradictory, <laughs> but I always thought a non-meeting was with an attorney, and that this should be a non-public because it's compensation. So the law says <laughs> that it's a, a, a strategy or negotiations with respect to collective bargaining. For a non -meaning. B, For non -meaning. consultation with a legal attorney. Two, they can be the same thing, but they don't have to be the same. Thing. Okay. And then C is a caucus consulting of elected members of public body. Um, and then circulation of draft documents. So strategy for negotiations is a non-meeting. Okay. Yeah. I just does not require the cause of call. I just president. want to double check we're doing the right thing. <laughs> That's, That's why I put That's that, why it's that, why I put that <laughs> inside each of your folders. Okay. Wow. So can we take a like a ten or five minute break? Did we have to say why we're going into this room? We, we did. just did. We, we did. just did. Yeah. We're all set. Okay. Okay, five okay, minute so break. Okay, five minute break and meet in the conference room. Okay.